Hello everyone and welcome to another video. I've, uh, I I just recorded this and it uh, I literally spoke for half an hour straight and then realised I botched up the recording. So before I sit here and rage at the screen, I'm just going to go again. I'm just going to do the whole video again. Hello everybody. It might be a good idea though because to be honest it was a 30 minute video and it didn't really need to be 30 minutes. But hello everybody and welcome to uh, another build video for Elementalist. Today I'm looking at Condition Elementalist, which is something kind of weird. I don't think many... Uh, elementalists really run conditions and I don't think they were designed to run conditions either not all classes this is something I think people should understand as well not all classes in this game are designed to be perfect in every role but it is kind of an option if you want to go there um, for the record I don't know whether this is amazing I definitely think elementalists can achieve more going in different specs I'm not sure how amazing this could be in kind of high-end fractals and 100% this is just a PvE build this would never work in tournaments or anything like that so and though it could be interesting in World vs. World, I will say that much, because you could probably catch people by surprise. But this is a condition elementus. This is the best I've managed to make one. If you're interested, um, then watch on. Uh, I'll show you kind of just the, the power of it. Dolly Axe here. We're out in Frostgorge Sound. Um, the Dolly Axe. So this is an 80 zone. I felt it was kind of important to come to an 80 zone. Um, these are the kind of conditions, the, the range of conditions I can get on a foe with this build. Uh, a reasonable amount of bleeds. Um, and obviously Dolly Axe take a little while to kill, so uh, if you thought that took too long. One, it's because I'm a condition elementalist, and that's not that amazing. But also, two, these guys do have some, you know, reasonable vitality. But this is the kind of kind of the way that the build works. I'm going to be sat here talking outside this outpost for the majority of this video. Uh, but I'm going to keep cutting in footage of me fighting things, so um, do expect to see more of that. Uh, but yeah, so uh, where to start? I guess I'll start with the, the gear. So uh, the way I see this build, there are two ways you can roll with your gear if you want to be a condition elementalist and there are two ways that you can roll with your traits uh, and I don't know whether I've picked the best ones to be honest but I don't have the money to go with a different gear set so I've come with this way as you can see I'm going with a signet build um, I'll talk about skills and stuff later but so first of all my gear uh, I'm only in rare stuff so I could be doing more damage if I decided to go all the way up to exotic but I am on a rabid set so I'm getting precision toughness as the minor stats and condition damage as the major stat on all of my armor and then the same for my jewelry too i bought this stuff from uh, or at the end of the duena event chain there's some of the new items you can get from the karma vendors at the end of those areas they're 42k a pop for karma so bear that in mind but it's kind of a nice way to get the stuff um and also they've got Criscola jewels on them, so because uh, there is no rabid jewel, there's no jewel that gives you precision, toughness, condition damage, but there are jewels that give you condition damage, power and vitality. So uh, this is the setup I've gone, it's mostly rabid with a tiny little bit of carrion in there on the jewels there. So. This is what I've gone, and it's the same with my armor. Why have I done this? Uh, two reasons. First of all, because as an elementalist, if you want to go condition damage and you have a look at your traits, you'll see that condition damage is paired up with toughness. So I say play to your strengths. If you're getting toughness from going into earth magic, then definitely do it. So you're getting both of these stats from your traits, and you're also getting both of them from your armor set too. Uh, to top it off, though, the nice thing about it is you can then choose to go with runes of the undead, which give you, again, condition damage and toughness. Wow, brilliant. But also, they give us 5% of our toughness becomes condition damage. Um, so that's really nice. All this toughness we've just been scaling up, that's now going straight into our condition damage. And we get a reasonable amount of toughness too. Might I add, we're on 3,101 armor at the moment. So that's quite nice for a light armor class. It could be higher. I've got much higher on other setups where I've been like bunking in PvP. But this is this is nice and it's actually helping that six uh, slot on this rune set do something nicely. So that's why I went with Rabid. Uh, the other option is to go with Carrion, which uh, is what I've got on the jewellery here because I've got no other choice. Carrion would give us condition damage again, but also power as a minus stat and vitality. Now, the power I feel like would be quite useful because as an elementalist, we're not really designed to be doing condition damage. Therefore, we do conditions on the side of otherwise quite high hitting ability. So, for example, I'll use Dagger, Fire Achievement Skill 3 here as an example. Uh, this has got, you know, it's got burning on it, but the main component of this skill is the the fact that it does blast damage even with all this condition gear here you can see that the burning that this skill does is still less than the blast damage so if you were to go with carrion armor that might be more useful to you because then you're still playing into the fact you've got a lot of power as well as condition 
The other um, change here, if you did decide to go with Carrion instead of Rabid, uh, would be you'd get Vitality instead of Toughness. So that means two things. First of all, you'd want to change your runes, um, because obviously that last clause wouldn't be so useful, because you get Vitality instead of Toughness. Uh, and in that situation, I would say probably go with the runes of the Afflicted, because that will give you Poison and Bleed. And I'll explain the importance of Poison in a minute. Um, so that would be quite nice. But also the second reason why you might want to do it, why the change from Toughness to Vitality could be a good thing, Thing, is we've got really high toughness right now but very low vitality look at this I've only got 14,000 health that's low that's what you get from basically being an elementalist one of the lowest classes in the game for base health and then building basically no vitality whatsoever that's really low that's very dangerous and what makes it more dangerous is we also have really high toughness and that means we're going to be a prime target for enemy AI if we were to take this into fractals or something so we're going to get a lot of focus and we're not really going to have much to stand up to it because our vitality is so damn low we do have a way of healing through it on my spec at the moment i'm on scepter dagger so we do we so we do get two heal skills and we get our regular heal skill which is also quite powerful because of the way we're traded but still it's not ideal so you could go with carrion i think if i could make the decision again i would go with carrion instead of rabid but uh that's what I've gone with here. So that's kind of one split, and that's what I'm doing with my uh, armor right now. I'm also using Scepter Dagger, which I'll talk about again in a minute. Uh, we'll look at the skills in a sec. Uh, as for traits, uh, I've gone 20 into fire, bit of power, same kind of reason for what I was saying if you decide to go for carrying. The powers are nice because we're just we're elementalists, we scale well off of it. But also condition duration. Um, as far as condition duration is going, 20% is okay. If you can buy yourself some veggie pizza, this will give you an extra 40%, so we're going to be looking at 60%, that can be really helpful. And what, as far as consumables go in general, also you can use these quality tuning crystals, which are really cheap on the trading post because everyone makes them while maxing out their artificer. They're really cheap. Uh, and these will give you condition damage equal to your toughness, just like our runes, and the same for vitality too. So these will scale our uh, stats even higher to put us up to 1,600 condition damage without any uh, any might stacks, which is uh, pretty strong, especially considering we're not on full exotic gear right now. So um, yeah, I've gone into fire 20 for the condition damage and the bit of power. Uh, the traits themselves, I've gone with 30% chance to cause burning on a critical hit. Now, we're going to be getting burning anyway most of the time, um, but the other choices in this slot aren't that amazing. We do have some nice precision because of my armor, as I say, so this will be procking a fair amount of the time um, but the other choice is just a kind of naff that's the main reason why I've picked this lava font is rubbish the main one you'll probably look at and think oh this could be really good uh, is embers might deal 5% extra damage to burning foes we're a condition elementalist we're always gonna be making them burning surely this is amazing no, not really. Uh, you see, traits like this don't actually scale the damage of the conditions themselves up. And since that's where all of our eggs are, that's the, that's what we're putting our damage into, uh, it's not really that useful. It does have its use because they are going to be burning a lot. So you will get that extra damage out of your other abilities. But it's not as useful as it looks. And you're going to find a lot of traits like that if you try and create a condition elementalist. Another big one is in Earth Magic that was quite tempting for me for a while. This one, Salt Stone. Deal 5% more damage to bleeding foes. That looks good, but it's not really, because that it won't make your conditions do 5% more damage. It doesn't make the bleeds do 5% more, so not so useful, and that's why I've not gone with it. Uh, further, then we can go 20 in to give me Fire's Embrace, which means when I activate a Signet, I gain a Fire Shield for 3 seconds. As you can see on my skills here, this is a Signet build, so I've got 4 Signets. Whenever I use one of these, it gives me a Fire Shield. Fire Shields are Auras, so therefore I've gone 10 into Air Magic and taken the trait that gives me Fury and Swiftness when I get an Aura. So if I use a Signet, I'm pretty sure I've explained this on my channel before, actually on a different build, um, which which means that whenever I use a Signet, I gain an Aura, I gain Fury and Swiftness, as well as the foe, you know, actually taking the effect of the Signet itself. So it's pretty useful, uh, quite nice synergy there, and this therefore means I always have Fury, basically, in fights, as long as I'm rotating properly through my Signets. I've always got Fury, and because I've always got Fury, that means we have a 60% chance to crit in fights which is okay it could be higher it's only that high because of our armor because of the fury and because i've got a signal of fire on here which passively improves my critical chance so it goes up to 60 percent it's quite nice um it's still not good enough for something else you can choose in your trace which i'll talk about later but because we have a 60 percent chance let me just quickly show you my weapons as well the sigils i've gone with um one of these i've gone with a 60 percent chance on critical to inflict bleeding so we have a 60 percent chance to crit and then 60 percent of those are going to bleed people and also a bunch of them are going to burn people as well, 30% are going to burn people, so 
That's all kind of playing in the, into each other, this top section of the traits. Also, because we've gone tear into, ten into air magic anyway, that's given us more precision, more crit chance, blah, 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 blah. Right. So then we've also gone 30 into earth magic, and this is where the build kind of really solidifies itself, I think. Um, why 30 into earth magic? Same reason as I said earlier, because it's condition damage. Hey, that's what we want. Also toughness, which is, hey, what we want because of our runes. But also, and because of the consumables, if you're popping those. But also because if I go 30, you don't have to go to 30 in here. You could just go 20. But I've gone the full 30, because then I can maintain the passive effects of my signets when I activate them. So... As you know, a Signet will have a passive effect when I activate it, it will go away usually. Uh, the passive effect of Signet of Fire improves my critical chance. I activate it and the passive is still on me. Not only is the passive still on me, but I've also got Fury too now, so it all plays nicely off of one another. Uh, and I've done that for all of my signets, so we've got a lot of signets, and that's what I was talking about earlier when I was saying that my heal skill was quite strong, because the signet of restoration means I'm healing with every single ability I use, and I can even activate it and get a big heal, and it will still continue to heal me. So that's quite nice, and that helps to compensate for my terrible, terrible squishiness, because I've only got 13,000 health, though a lot of toughness. So uh, that's kind of why I've gone 30 into Earth. I, again, 20 is very possible. It's only 100 condition damage you will have lost. 100 out of 1,693 isn't that big of a deal. But it will scale down a bit because you'll be lo losing toughness too. But yeah. The other traits I've chosen along the way with it are Signets recharge faster because we're using a lot of Signets. Um, and also Bleeds ap I apply last longer. Um, none of the other stuff is really that tempting. There's some interesting things though. You could go with Protection which means whenever you use one of these Signets you gain Fury, Swiftness and Protection all for yourself which is quite nice. Especially again because we're quite squishy. But that does mean sacrificing one of these other traits which is quite big if you ask me and, and not necessarily a good idea. And I've already explained why I think that the 5% more damage to Bleeding Foes isn't that great. Uh, for the end of the traits, um, you could go 10 in Arcane, which I kind of feel like is necessary for most builds. 10 in Arcane, some much needed achievement cooldown and boon duration, as well as whenever you swap around, you're getting boons. In particular, Fire will give you Might if you take this trait, and that's really nice. Like, Might will scale your condition damage up really high. It's very, very powerful. And I would say if you want to do more damage with your conditions on any class at all, start looking at Might, because Might is really nice. Or you can go 10 into Water Magic. Usually, I would ne uh, usually I'd never make a build that didn't have 10 in arcane but i feel like it's really important to at least have 10 in water here because we're so squishy we have such low vitality by going into water magic we get a little bit of healing power just a tiny bit and we also get a thousand health if i wasn't it if i wasn't 10 into water magic i'd only be on 12k health really really bad especially when you look at other classes and how high they can have their health just by virtue of being that class. So 12k would be way too low for me. Uh, but also it allows us to take a nice trait here. Uh, trait 2 I've gone with, which means Arcane and Signet skills are causing vulnerability. That's three stacks each. So if I use my three Signets, my three offensive Signets, uh, that's then nine stacks of vulnerability on someone, which obviously not only I benefit from, but so do all of my allies and my team, uh, which is always really quite nice. So that's why I've gone with that. That's kind of my trait setup. Um, now there is another option, as I said earlier, there's two ways you could go with your gear, which hopefully I explained properly. There's two ways you can go with your traits too. If you've tried to make a condition damage elementalist, you've probably looked at the arcane line. And you've looked at it because if you go 25 points into arcane, so really deep in the tree, uh, you can get this minor trait which says skills have a chance to apply a condition on critical hits. Which seems really good, especially for me because I've got all this precision, right? And I've got all this crit chance. So surely that would be a good thing to go for. Also, if you go 30, if you go all the way into Arcane, which isn't much if you've already gone 25 in, um, you'll see that there's also this trait which means based on attunement, our Arcane skills cause Burning, Shield, Blindness or Immobilize depending on what attunement we're in. Now, that can seem quite nice, but I've got a couple of problems with it. First of all, if we're going for this trait with the Arcane skills, that means you can't use Signets, which means you get lower crit chance because you've got less Fury and you don't get the Signet of Fire. So you've already got lower crit chance and less chance to proc the Arcane Precision without totally overhauling your gear to go with something that gives you Precision as the major stat, for example. And in that situation, your Condition Damage is probably taking a big hit, and is it worth it? That's my first reason I don't like it. Second reason is you are forever bound to the cooldowns of your arcane skills when they're on cooldown and some of them have got quite hefty cooldowns you're screwed like you're not going to be able to get those extra conditions off and some of these conditions don't last long enough anyway is it worth having a 45 second cooldown skill just to get a one second immobilize off of it i don't think so necessarily and thirdly and lastly and most importantly too 
The 25 trait, in my opinion, is overrated. It looks really good, like skills have a chance to apply a condition, and they're pretty good conditions too. But it's only got like a 7.5 chance to proc. 7.5 chance, that's so bad. Like, even if by some miracle, I'm already on quite high precision and quite nicely sorted out, I'm only at 60% in fights. Even if you got your way all the way up to 100% crit chance in fights by going, you know, really high into arcane and air magic, you're still only on a 7.5 chance for this thing to proc it's not gonna happen that often i think it might even have an, have an internal cooldown and again if you have gone to such extreme measures to make this a thing to make this work you're now really deep into arcane which is a tree that doesn't give you anything beneficial for conditions and air magic which again doesn't give you anything beneficial for conditions except for the fact it's giving you the precision for the crits for them with the way i've gone i've got some pretty nice condition duration and some pretty nice condition damage too that's the reason why i've not gone with arcane though i think it could be possible if you spec everything the right way it might work but those are my reasons why i don't like it especially the 25 trait it's it's not that great honestly so that's what i've gone with for my traits um we can look at the, the skills now <coughs> just get, let me have a drink i've been talking for so long now because i'm just filming these two back to back now for skills i've gone with signets because of all that stuff that i described with my traits earlier which means that i'll be getting lots of procs lots of crits for my um fire magic trait and also my weapon which is giving me bleeds on crits but also because by the nature of the way this build works really we want lots of bleeds to go out on an enemy the reason we're on a scepter is because the auto attack on the scepter in earth attunement is really powerful like i can just sit here and auto attack this guy and eventually I'll kill him. It won't take that long, but the amount of bleeds you get from this is really, really powerful. You can get a lot of stacks on him. You know, I'm just auto-attacking. I've got 17 stacks on this guy, 18 stacks. Uh, you know, and, and that's just from auto-attacking a guy before they start to tick off. 18 stacks of bleed. It's really nice. But the main problem with that is, you're an elementalist. You, you've got all this utility that your other achievements are offering that you kind of can't tap into because you're stuck in Earth achievement. And if you want to be a condition guy, I feel like you need to have at least three core conditions on an enemy and those would be the damaging conditions you want the bleed which we've got in spades you want the burning which we've also kind of got if we usually go into fire magic and also you want poison but the problem is while we're in earth achievement we only get the bleeds so on a, on a, if we weren't using signets what if i want to then go and give myself the burning how, how do i pull that off well i've got to go into fire achievement and particularly on my trait setup there you go now i've got the burning on there but on my trait setup uh now i've got nothing in arcane and it's going to take a really long time to get back into with earth achievement it's just generally a bit of a pain in the ass so what the signets enable you to do is kind of be able to camp in one achievement a little bit more and still get a variety of conditions off because that's what the active of all these signets do every signet active is putting a different condition on blind for air chill for water immobilize for earth burning for fire this signet of fire with the way we spec is putting 14 seconds of burning 10,000 damage just from activating this on a foe 14 seconds of burning and it's only got a 16 second cooldown so what this means is by going with signets i can without ever having to touch fire achievement permanently maintain burning on someone because it will be on there for nearly the entirety of the time before the signet cools down and also my crits are inflicting burning too so you can pretty much guarantee that i've always got burning on someone without ever having to be in fire achievement whatsoever and that lets me camp in earth achievement and still have the fire coming out while i'm stacking tons and tons of bleed on people and by the same token, this is what's beneficial for the other signets too. I can be chilling people, I can be immobilizing people. Because we have really nice condition duration now, it's allowing these to last quite a while. For example, Signet of Earth, that's a four and three quarter second immobilize. That's really strong. That, <laughs> like, by default, I think this thing's got less than three seconds. And to go all the way up to that is, is really nice. And I'm, I'm really kind of enjoying it. Uh, you, you're pretty free with the utilities, however you want to go with the signets. Um, for example, you can swap out... Uh, earth if you really want if you don't think the mobilize is that good you can swap that out for a quick blind on air but the main reason why air is nice is because it's instant activation so i can cast air in the middle of casting fire and they've both got very short cooldowns as well so if you go for air and fire fire yeah, it's going to be very easy to maintain your fury on this spec because you can just get those when they, they cool down very very quickly 
Uh, another option as well, uh, this isn't an option for everyone, it's only an option for Asuras, but another option of course then is Radiation Field. Like this is a really strong racial ability that like, I, I, I kind of fell in love with as soon as I realised uh, what it was like to play a Condition Elementalist. This will give you weakness which the build otherwise isn't putting out in spades unless you go dagger dagger. It gives you the burning, uh, the poison consistently um, and it will stack up for a very long time. There you can see I've got poison on him for 26 seconds on a class that shouldn't be able to inflict poison at all. So radiation feels really nice, but I appreciate that not everyone can use it because not everyone's an Asura. So you can watch out. Also, the other thing with Radiation Field is its AoE, which I'm going to talk about in a bit, because the reason why I think Elementalist condition characters are crappy is because of AoE, but we'll get to that when we get to it. So yeah, that's kind of what I've gone with for my um, utilities. You don't have to go full Signets. You probably could take the last Signet off. Like, Chill. Chill is only there, really, because I like the variety. I like the passive condition removal, but um, you could go with anything else you could possibly want. Like, a, a Frost Bow, for example. This thing bleeds on the skill 4, um, so each stack of that bleed is doing a thousand damage and if you can get someone Hold on so if you can immobilize say with the signal of earth and then drop the fire the ice storm down on them You can stack a lot of bleeds up on someone very very quickly um, And then they just die. you know that was 17 stacks of bleed and again, that's aoe too So the ice bow is quite nice, uh, but to keep it simple for the video. I, I'm just gonna keep with uh, the signets. I would definitely recommend keeping the uh, signet of fire just because the burning active on it is amazing as well as the uh, passive crit chance is really good. And the signet of earth too because that's more toughness, it's an immobilize and the toughness helps you with the condition damage, it just goes up and up and up and up and up. Uh, the last kind of interesting thing though too and obviously our heal skill is very powerful because we're always getting the passive even if we activate it. The last thing is um, I'm on a conjure fiery greatsword. Why? Because I, th I think the elemental would probably still be quite strong, but because there was a recent change where these give you different stats, and this gives us power and condition damage, so this puts our condition damage even higher. We're on 1,873 without any might now. We're nearly on 2,000 condition damage, and we're not on exotic gear either. Um, and what this means is just the skill 2, for example, alone does 19,000 damage on a 5 second cooldown. Uh, so it's pretty strong. So again, you can do that. You can immobilize someone in the field you've just laid down, and you can just totally mess them up. So. There's some pretty fun stuff that you can do. Um, it's interesting to see how these abilities scale on a conditioned elementalist. Um, and obviously also because it is a conjured ability, I've summoned one. If you're on a team with someone that does traditional power spec, the greatsword's really strong for them too. They can pick it up and do their own thing. Um, so one thing I want to talk about as well is <clears throat> the reason why I'm kind of going with this build where I never did before was because they fixed a sigil. Our first sigil is a sigil of earth which gives us bleeding on crit um, and our second sigil is a sigil of doom which gives us poison when we swap achievement. This for some reason along with the sigil of intelligence was bugged for a really long time in the game. I kind of feel like if you want a condition build to work you kind of need three conditions out there, a three damaging one. burning bleeding and poison um, and using this sigil we can actually get that sometimes it doesn't proc when you when it should even if the cooldowns off and I think that's because of these 15 traits as an elementalist which make us do damage when we swap attunement so we swap an attunement it procs the sigil but then the sigil instantly goes away because we've just wasted it on whatever this is and the enemy wasn't adjacent to us if that makes sense um, but it's still quite nice and what this allows me to do is I can engage an enemy, say, in fire attunement to get that quick uh, burning off on them on the auto attack, and then I can just swap into another attunement, and you can see that it's put the poisoned on there. So just by doing this, I have kind of a nice variety of conditions going out on someone. Also, if you keep close to someone, you can cripple them by swapping into earth. So there you see, I swapped into earth, and it crippled, did damage, and put poison on them just from swapping in. Um, so... That's quite a nice sigil. Uh, it's really the main reason, as I say, why I'm now trying this. Um, but there, there's a conflict there. And this is one of the reasons why I feel like Elementalist don't really work. There's a conflict there because this is one of our only ways to get poison unless we're in Asura and we can use Radiation Field. But that involves us swapping attunements. So if I'm here stacking bleeds on someone and I'm stacking burn, which is brilliant. This is what I really like. Now I want poison. Well, now I've got to swap out. Yeah, I've got poison, but now I, I can't keep stacking the bleeds. And, you know, these enemies are weak as anything and they're going to go down. But I have to wait ages before I can stop putting the bleeds back on again. Unless, again, you go with the ice bow or something like that. So there are ways to work around it, but it's, it's a problem. And it's something that kind of annoys me with the Elementalist. Like, just the idea of having to camp in Earth Achievement, which, frankly, you have to, um, to get the maximum damage out, irritates me because we're an Elementalist. We've got all of this utility and these other three achievements. Whether we're relying on them for conditions or not, there's a lot of stuff. There's updraft in there. There's heals for our team. There's auras. There's so much that we can be getting from other achievements that 
Unfortunately, we can't really on this spec, or at least we're not encouraged to. And that perhaps is a virtue of going far into Arcane, because then you, re you can reduce the cooldown on them and feel a bit more free in that regard. But that's kind of one conflict I find with Elementalist trying to go conditions. There's not much that will inflict conditions on the other things. Uh, so why my scepter? Mainly for the auto attack in Earth Magic. Three stacks of bleed, really nice. Uh, more toughness from Rock Barrier, which means more condition damage. Um, there's some nice blinds, and also because we're squishy, it allows us to keep at our range. There's a nice heal as well. Vulnerability on Shatterstone. If you combine a Shatterstone with your three signets of choice, we'll go with those. So we'll use it on the Longhorn Ram. You can you can get some reasonable uh, vulnerability off on enemies. Um, pretty quickly, which again your entire team can benefit from. That's 13 stacks that will last quite a long time of vulnerability on someone, uh, and that could be nice. Uh, so that, th those are the main reasons why I've gone for Scepter, but there's not, it doesn't have that much to offer. Dagger again, same question as ever, what do you want, Dagger or Scepter? Dagger's got some um, nice benefits to it. We already have a lot of burning because we're on a Signet of Fire, but skill 2 here also does tons of burning. You can see 12... 12,000 damage for the four seconds of burning but that thing ticks four times so technically it's a lot more than that um, and then in the other achievements we've got some chill here chill isn't something we come by very easily on this build unless we're using a signet of water uh, so that's quite nice and also we get some weakness too on skill 2 on dagger so if you want you can go for a dagger there's also more auras on dagger but again it's even more risky because you're going to be <laughs> even closer to people when you're very very squishy so maybe dagger would be something to go with if you want to do carrion instead of rabid which is what i'm doing at the moment dagger also has kind of a lot of power things which obviously you're not scaling like you're going to be doing measly fire grabs 800 damage on a fire grab if they're not burning they will be burning but if they weren't it'd be very low so that's uh, kind of my view with scepter dagger with Scepter and Dagger. Uh, focus is still rubbish, there's no conditions to speak of at all there. Um, you could maybe use uh, Dagger and Focus offhand to give yourself like um, uh, Obsidian Flesh while you're just spamming out bleeds on Scepter Focus maybe, but I'm not sure whether that'd be really good. The only other fierce contender here is staff now the drawback to staff is immediately you only get one sigil the sigil i've got in this is crap but you only get one sigil which means you're either not going to get poison or you're not going to get those extra bleeds um from whichever of the weapons you decide not to use so you you're having to make a compromise somewhere there if you do go with staff which is annoying in the first place but here's the main reason why you would go staff and why i think staff might be the best bet even though it's got a lot of problems with it. Staff allows you to do AOE conditions and that's the main problem. I, I feel like for a condition build to work it needs to have some kind of AOE capacity. You know necromancers are only so good with it because even if they're not using an AOE build they can just stack tons of conditions on one guy and then epidemic them. If we can't do that we have to kind of exhaust all of our stuff on just one target and if we're in a group scenario and there's lots of targets we're not going to be putting our weight. Not in the same way we could be if we were on another elementalist spec that does a lot of point blank AOE and really nice things in that regard. Um, but staff does offer that AOE. Just like with radiation field you can then drop your AOEs down. You can use uh, the eruption which is 14,000 damage. AOE on targets is 19 seconds of bleeding. You get plenty of uh, immobilizer as well on the staff. And again you, you kind of you're gonna have to find yourself camping in uh, earth achievement which again is a, a problem with the sigil of doom. But um, you will find yourself probably being a lot more effective in big kind of team scenarios if you do camp in, in staff. Because staff is quite nice. It will get quite a few bleeds off. The cooldown on eruption is very low. And you can trade these cooldowns to be even uh, shorter. But an AoE immobilize on skill 5 that lasts for 3 and a quarter seconds with 32 seconds of bleeding just on that one ability is 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 nuts. It's, it's really high. So staff is probably something I think I would love to work. But outside of uh, earth achievement what else have we got for conditions there's very little there's there's a, a single target blind on air achievement there's there's an aoe chill on um on water which is quite nice honestly that would let you get rid of the signal of water and there's an aoe burning on fire but it's not enough really you're probably going to get a lot less single target damage out on a staff, but you will have you you will shine a lot better in group scenarios. So that's kind of my view for the weapons and the utility skills. Uh, that's pretty much everything I have to say, mostly about it. Um, so maybe there's kind of three ways you can spec it. You, you've got a choice with your armor, you've got a choice with your traits, and then you've got a choice with what kind of weapon you go with. But that's kind of as much as I can see, or as far as you can take a condition spec elementalist. It's nothing too great, honestly. Uh, maybe I, when I did that consumable items guide earlier in the week, lots of people were like, oh no, I, I run a really good condition elementalist. I'd like to see it. 
it. <laughs> I think this is quite nice. Um, I think a lot is viable in PvE, and I'm certainly not saying that this can't work. I just think there are better options. I don't think people have to run the better options. I don't really like that mentality at all. But uh, yeah, don't, don't misinterpret this as me saying, oh, this is the best thing ever. I just think it's a nice, fun way to play an Elementalist that I don't think we really should be able to play. I don't think we're meant to be able to do conditions, but we can get away with it. If we really try, we can get away. And this is how I'm getting away with conditions on Elementalist. Anyway, thanks very much, guys, for watching. Let me know what you think. Um, I know it's been a long-winded build video. Maybe not as uh, effective as the other build videos I did. But it's been an interesting uh, like look into the profession. Like It is an angle of Elementalist I've never played before. So uh, it was kind of cool to sit down and work through. And this is uh, what I came up with that was sort of my favourite. So thanks again, guys, very much. And I guess I will see you next time. See you next time, everybody.